Islam is Omar al Shamari. I was brought into the faith by a, a man whose name was Samuel al Shamari, and I met him in Sarajevo, right in the, at the Monument Cafe. He showed the Sunni Bosnia, they're going to be like, oh, the monument. And it's right in front of the cathedral. And I saw this man come up with his friends, and I said, hey, excuse me, are you Kuwaiti? Because he looks Kuwaiti. He says, no. And I said, okay. And the guy that was actually talking for them, he says, oh, I'm from Palestine. Govoriš Bosanski. Pričam Bosanski. Dobre, hey, kako snaš? And then he says, no, my country is from Qatar. I said, hey, look, this was in September. I said, here, look at my Qatari ID. And then he says, oh, well, my friends, you know, wow, you know, and they're like, hey, join us. And so we, so we sat and talked, and then they said, call me, call me, call me, take my number, take my number. When you come to Qatar, you will be our friend, you will be our guest. So I went to their masjid, or majlis, majlis, and uh, I joined them for discussions and things like that. And uh, from the date of meeting them to the date of embracing Islam and doing the shahad, I was, uh, it was 54 days. And it's very historic, actually, it's, it's very unheard of to be accepted by a family and as an American of my particular experience, having been in the Air Force and working in contracts, supporting in the Army, doing what they're doing, which is, is not necessarily, it's not really a good thing for, for our faith and for our people. Um, I began to learn about the whole thing and, uh, and I learned about it way back. Uh, my mother, she, she couldn't answer the questions that I had for her since I was eight. She started calling me an atheist. I left atheism and I said, hey, I learned to hate God and become an atheist by virtue of the fact that I learned from the Catholics. So let me step over here and I'm looking at from where the Muslims are looking at the way. That, that'll work for me. I, I can believe that there could be possibility. And then they handed me the book, the Quran, and it was actually... This is in Qatar. In Qatar, yeah. My, my brother in faith, Adil al-Shahin al-Samari, which is my Shahada, number one, uh, gave me a bunch of material, and, and he gave me the Quran, and actually, within a couple days, I opened it to the Surah al-Baqarah, you know, and that's the first thing I read, the first seven verses of Surah al-Baqarah, the lucky seven. And that led me to actually got chills three times, and then I actually lost myself and I was almost crying, you know, because I was like, wow, this is my final answer. And the final answer is that I understand that Islam is about peace and success. If you believe and you keep an open mind, you know, you can recite the whole thing. And I mean, I, I can't get you, you know, verse 5 and verse 4, I think. It's, I get kind of flaky on those because they, they don't really apply so much to, to, to my, my learning and my lineage and everything else. So, within, within a month, I, I went and I did the shahad at the cultural center of Islamic Cultural Center Al Fanar in Doha. And then there's a much bigger story for this and, and I can share that with you some other time. But I think once we get into that it's not gonna look so nice. So so how many years ago was this now? This was earlier this uh, late last year, September. September to October and then November third I became a Muslim and, and November third, two thousand two thousand twelve. And fifty four days it was fifty four days exactly after I met these men. And what they showed me was that, that hey, they tell us that, that the Qataris and, and Muslims in general, but Qataris primarily as, as the people that, that are our hosts in, in that country, in, in, in the jobs that we do, our sponsors in fact, are the friendliest people and, and they want to talk about religion and you, you, know, you, you, you have to uh, avoid presenting yourself as an atheist. But I told them in Sarajevo, I was like, look, man, I'm an atheist, you know, but I'm trying to figure this out, and it sounds so good to me, because I've learned... So learned you were in Sarajevo yeah. in your on vacation, 20s? On vacation from, uh, from the age of uh, 2004, that was uh, 28 years old. I became 20, I, I turned 28 uh, when I got there, actually. This was back in 2004. And, 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 I, and I started to integrate with the people. I, I learned, I had my first conversations in Bosnia with Bosnian Muslims. Uh, a man named Salim, Salim Vrajalic, and he was a leather tailor. And I actually embraced the culture, and they embraced me by bringing me to their homes, giving me coffee, and doing these things that, that Muslims generally do. So, as any man going into a, a man's home, a Muslim man's home, you go into the uh, majlis, or you go into a place that is not around the women. And Bosnia is very flexible because Bosnia is an integration zone. And the integration zone being what it is, allows for alcohol consumption, and allows for uh, flexibility in, in the different, different uh, aspects of, of our teachings of the faith. So, it's very flexible and it just draws you in and says, hey, you know, this is, this is just like, you know, something that, that works for me and, and that I can believe. And it's not threatening. These people are good, genuine people. The conversations that I had with that man are conversations that I can have with any man around the world. And I speak several languages. I speak Spanish. I can stand, understand Italian and French. And I got English and German. And then I, and I learned how to speak Bosnian. And so that takes me all the way to Ukraine and, and Russia, Moldova, all those. Pashtu, for example. In Bosnia, they say, Shaima Pasha. And in Pashtu, in the Afghan language of Pashtu, they say, Stalimashi Pasha. 
And it's the same thing. It's like, how are you, Basha? How are you, man? You know? So to me, I, I just let it all slide away, all the negativity that I was trained to believe in this, in this country, in this media. And I went and I, and I swore in. And the day that I swore in, right before doing evolution, my brother Zamel Ashamari says, hey, my old name is Jose Castaneda. He says, hey, man, um, listen, say, when you do the Shahad, you're going to be an al -shamari. And I just was like, whoa. And I started kind of doing this. And then he says, you're going to be Omar, al -shamari. And I embraced him. And I, and I cried like a baby. He accepted I, you yeah, in? He accepted me not only to the faith, but into his family. And, and to me, that was such an immense gesture as a person who doesn't have any brothers to be brought into a, a nuclear family of seven brothers and a larger tribal family of five million people. And when I did the uh, Shahat, I actually um, got phone calls from all of his extended family all over the Arab lands. And these people, just like any Arab, they came out of Yemen. And they went and they, they brought coffee out of Ethiopia through Yemen all the way across the Camel and Oasis caravan routes. And, and they brought to us what is modern enlightenment and the Enlightenment and the Renaissance and everything else, you understand that, you know what it is. It's, it was the kingdom of, of, of Spain under Abu Abdullah, Safadia, you know. And that was uh, a way for me to just sort of realize that, that I don't just come from this Catholic background. What we come from is Islam and the teachings of Islam, and I keep on spraying, and I'm sorry okay. about that. But the, the teachings of Islam, the teachings of Judaism, and I learned later that actually I have a stronger Jewish, Jewish lineage, but, but the bottom line is that Jews gave rise to the evolution of religion, which is Christianity and Islam. And we, as Muslims, have to, have to look and say, and, and the teachings are there. It says, it says you must look at, your, at the people that were before you, and you must respect them. So we look, look at them and say, hey, yo, we're going to protect you, we're going to accept you, we're going to give you all the stewardship that we give to each other, and, and we're going to do it peacefully. And unfortunately, that's a weakness, and that's what's being exploited against the Muslims around the world. And I left the career that I had with the military and the military uh, uh, environment and, and earning money from, from a practice of supporting a, a, a system that actually um, oppresses and, and kills people that practice peace. And they have to go and, 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 and not to get radical here because I'm a patriot, patriotic American, still believe in everything that I, that I swore in to do and protect. What I believe is that, is that there is no mission on this earth that, that should damage or, or harm any. We are, and I finally found my epicenter, the Islamic Center of San Jose. And I've been to Abu Bakr. I've been to um, the Islamic Center of Oakland, Oakland Islamic Center. And both of those places are, are, are said to be uh, havens for radicals and, and, and people that are, that are anti-American. But the truth being told is that if you, if you look at the Constitution and you look at the Declaration of Independence, all of it says that we're, we're men created equal and, and it talks about peace and it talks about all these different things that, that are not practiced on a, on, a, on a genuine, honest basis. And, and the people that are Muslims that come from the Arab lands uh, or around the Arab lands. And I lived in Sarajevo for, for eight, or some Godina, or some Godina. Uh, those people are so peaceful that they didn't have any weapons when they were slaughtered in Srebrenica by 8,000 or 10,000 or more. And it's a shame and it's a tragedy that the international community did the embargoes as they did. That only affected the Muslims and my Muslims friends within weeks of arriving in Sarajevo, my girlfriend said, you know, what happened was terrible. And it is terrible. Because the bottom line is, this is such a beautiful faith and such a peaceful faith that there's no reason to take arms against them. But what happened is just simply history repeating itself. And, and there you have it. And that's, I mean, that's all I can say right now, but I can talk forever, I'll tell you that. So, um, maybe I can just ask you just a couple of things that's again. Uh, your name again, and just a little bit about uh, praying here at this masjid in San Jose. So, your name again to remind my, everyone. My, my former name is Jose Ivan Castaneda Preciado. That comes from a very long and distinct lineage of, of Jewish uh, mercantile people. There's a, there's a street in Madrid called Calle Preciado, which is the most expensive real estate in Spain. And Preciado family is the most successful uh, merchant family or business family in existence uh, that I can say uh, as a greater mass um, in Mexico or around the Spanish influence land.